Let's do it. This is how you watch Hey, this is how you watch Hey, keeping the faith in the king, and the patience will give us a. We're gonna continue where the, the officer left off, okay? Uh, let's read that from the top again. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8 and verse 46. If they shall sin against thee. So the scripture says if they sin against thee. Now he explained to you, he went to um, 1 John, and he told you what sin is. So now you have an understanding of what sin is. What is sin? Specific. What is sin? Not obeying God's commandments. Let's read it one more time for you. This is the book of First John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. So he says, who commits sin transgresses the law. Where are those laws from? In the book. We call it the Bible. Now do you know those laws? Now we're going to look at some of those, but we're going to finish uh, First Kings first. Read on. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, if, and thou be angry with them. So all of us have sinned. And guess what? The most I get saved. You have children? You have six kids. When they do something wrong against what you say, what do you do? You get angry. And you might punish them some way, right? Guess what? We are the most nice children. When we do against his commandments, he gets angry. And guess what he does? He punishes us. Just the same. You understand? Read on. And thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy. But guess what? The most nice punishment is on a much larger scale than yours. Because what enemy were we delivered to? Look, look at look at the, the pictures right here. What enemy were we delivered to? Exactly, the Europeans. And what did they do to us? Slavery. So you see how severe the most dangerous punishment is. So you want, is it is it is it a good idea for us to go against his commandments as his children? Just like it's not a good idea for your kids to go against your commandments. Read up. Verse 47. Yet if they shall be think themselves. So no, you are delivered to the enemy. The scripture says you should do what? Be think themselves. What does it mean to be think yourself? Read it again. Verse 47. Yet if they shall be think themselves. What does it mean to be think yourself? Second guess, yes. And guess what? Not only just second guess, but it's a more uh, deep thought where you're looking at yourself and you say, hey, why, why, why am I going through this situation? Who am I? Because guess what? When you go to school, America says we came here as slaves. We don't say nothing else. Those slaves had a history before America. They had a name before they were called black. They had a heritage before they came and said, hey, hip hop is your heritage, bro. You, you, you beat that? So what was your heritage before all of this? That's when you're gonna bethink yourself. That's when you're gonna say, hey, no, there's more to me than what this man is telling me. There's more to me than what I'm seeing right here. You understand? So now you're gonna search out your heritage. You're gonna search out your forefathers. That's what you're gonna do. Because now you're saying, hey, this condition that our people are living in is not right. And you can see that. So you're gonna look around you and thoughts are gonna start to come and say, hey, there gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more to us than this. Why are we going through this situation? Why are we despised by everyone? It's not normal. That's not normal. We don't. Yeah, if they shut. 
yet that they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they were carried captives. So right here where we were carried captives, we're going to do this. And that's what we're doing right now. We're going to bring it back to your remembrance who you were. Read on. And repent. And do what? And repent. What does it mean to repent, bro? Let go, yeah, because you're gonna let go how? I hope you guys are doing good work. Okay, so to repent has to happen right here. You understand? Your mind gotta be renewed, refreshed. You're gonna let go of the things that you've learned. Read that again. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 47. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they were carried captives and repent. Yes, sir. Amen. This book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Thank you. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So the scripture says, repent and be converted. What does the word converted mean? When you, when you buy a, a, a car, and you say you want to do some conversion to that car, what are you doing to it? Change it. Okay, so that's a change. But what is the change that the scripture is talking about being converted? Read it again. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So that the conversion that you're going to do is keeping the laws of the Most High. Because remember, how did we get in the situation that we're in? We didn't keep the laws. So your conversion now is where you are going to learn the laws of the Most High and start to do what? Start to do what God says we were supposed to do. So that's the conversion. That's the repentance that our people need to do. You understand? So let's get, let's get, let's get a law for the brother. Because now, King says we have to repent in this land. So in order for you to repent, you need to do what? You need to learn the laws. So we're going to bring out a couple of the laws and help to guide you along that path of repentance that you need to take. Read. This is the book of First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So who is the head of every man? Christ. And he's talking about the Israelite man. Because Christ was an Israelite. You understand? He's from the tribe of Judah. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. So what are you seeing here? You see an order and structure. Structure. Because he says the head of men is Christ. And the head of the woman is now the man. So you have Christ, man, then the woman. Read on. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So the head of Christ is God. So we have God, Christ, man, woman, and then the children. Read on. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So it says every man that's praying or prophesying. What is prophesying? You have any idea? Yeah, speaking the truth. That's what we're doing right here, right now. We are speaking the truth. So it says if you're praying or prophesying, reading the scriptures, and that's what we're doing right now. Read on. Having his head covered. Having your head covered. Where's your head? Is it covered? Is it not covered? What's on your head? No, no. I ask you, where's your head? Right there. Is it covered? Yes. Good. Great. Every man playing or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So who is your head? Huh? Jesus Christ. So if your physical head is covered while we are prophesying, you are dishonoring who? All praises to the most high, bro. All praises. You got that. Read up. Read it again. 
This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. Go back to repent. All praises. You took that out of. You understood the scripture and you did what the most I said you were supposed to do. That's you following his commandment. That's what we call repentance. Read it again. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So you, the scripture was read. You understood. And guess what you did? You changed your mind. You changed your mind to conform to what the most High God has said. So that's repentance right there. That's an act of repentance. But it doesn't stop. We're going to have to come to Because there's more laws that you need to learn. More things that you need to apply. You understand my brother? Yes, we do. On the back of that flyer, um, there's a, a phone number that's there. And the address. Is that again? Right. That's, that's our contact information. You can contact us right there, and we will you know, give you the location of our school. Um, but let's continue. We're going to give you, you know, some more laws. Um, we have that Corinthians. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16. You know what, let's do the side. Yeah, that's right. Because you, you asked about the meeting just now, right? And guess what? We are commanded to congregate on what is called the Sabbath. Now, do you understand what the Sabbath is? All right, let's get that. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So, in the thinking of yourself or remembering, the Most High says, hey, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, which day would he call the Sabbath day? Which day is the Sabbath day? Is, just any, is it any day or is he being specific? He's specific. Now, we're going to find out what specific day he's talking about. Read on. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day... So he says six days we are allowed to labor, meaning do what? Work. We are allowed to go to work, make your money. You understand? Because we need money. So six days we do all of that, but on what day? But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Which day is the seventh day, my brother? Sunday? Count, count the days and tell me how you got to Sunday. Count the days. So which day is the first day of the week? Mm. Take a look at your phone. You have a calendar on your phone. Take a look at it. Because that's a, a misconception of our people. A misguided thought. So here again, as you now be thinking yourself, once again. So we're going to find out which day of the week is the first day of the week. What does your phone say? So now, the phone says it's Sunday. And if you were, I don't know if you, when you were in uh, preschool, there was a little nurse around that said the days of the week are Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Why did they start a Sunday? Because Sunday is the first day. You see what I'm saying? So now, counting from Sunday, tell me now, which day is the seventh day? Saturday. So, the Mosai didn't give the days names. So that's why he said the sixth, the seventh day. Six days we work, but on the seventh day, you cannot confuse that. You cannot change that. Because the numbers go from one all the way up to whatever numbers we could go up to. You understand? One to, from zero to ten. That never changes. You could change the names of, of stuff, but you will never be able to change the numbers. You understand what I'm saying? So, the most I didn't leave any room for error. It's just that you need to understand. So read it again. Verse Exodus chapter 20 and verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter. Thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So now we establish that the seventh day is a Sabbath, right? So now he's giving you the rules that governs that seventh day when we are supposed to worship him. The first thing he said, we should, do, we should not do any work in that day. Neither you nor anyone or any um, living thing that's within 
into your household. You understand that? So that's the first thing you gotta conform to, not working on the Sabbath. So do you work on Saturdays? So, I mean, we, as we are here in our captivity, we got to take time to fix things. So it's a process. You're not going to be able to just get up and say, hey, I'm not going to work tomorrow. Don't do that. Because guess what? You still need to make money and you might lose your job. But you can request. Make a request. You understand? Because our forefathers did that. You, you read the book of Daniel. They made a request to, the, to Pharaoh at that time and asked for what they what they wanted what um, in order to worship our God and in order to keep their their holy days you understand so which one you just said you finish um good so we're gonna give you another rule of the Sabbath so the first one was no working right we establish when is the Sabbath and we establish one rule no working so let's get another rule of the Sabbath Exodus chapter 35 and verse 2 six days shall work be done but on the seventh day that there shall be to you a holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whoso doeth any work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Sabbath day. So, like, right here in Exodus 35, another rule that we got. It says, kindle no fire. What does that mean, to kindle any fire? What do you think that means? Because we live here in America, right? Um, we have a winter. When it's cold, do we keep the heat going? Yeah. So that's fire. But when he says kindle no fire, what is he talking about? This is the book of Exodus, chapter 16 and verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which he will bake today, and see that which he will see, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So this is going to explain that part. This is killing no fire. Because on Friday, it says, make what you should bake, seed meaning boil. So you do all your cooking on Friday. You understand? So on the Sabbath, there should be no cooking. The kindling, the kindling of the fire is talking about cooking. So we learn the Sabbath is on Saturdays. We learn that um, we should not work. And we learn about no cooking. So those are three things that you're going to have to bear in mind and start to practice. Read on. And, laid, and they laid it up until the morning as Moses bade. Give me a um, uh, 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 binding song for me and So we're going to give you another rule of the Sabbath. Now, we did establish a day, but when does this Sabbath actually start? I don't think we, we mentioned that. Okay, we're going to show you in a minute. Go ahead. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13 and verse 15. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves and laden asses, and also wine, grapes, and figs, and all, mar and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, and I testified against them, and I testified against them in the day wherein they sold pictures. So another rule of the Sabbath in the 1031. Another rule of the Sabbath is we should not buy nor sell on the Sabbath. So just like you see all these stores around, make sure you do all your purchasing. You are from Sunday all the way to Friday to do all your purchasing. Whatever you need for the Sabbath, you get all of that before the Sabbath actually starts. So this way you don't do what? You don't break God's commandment. You don't break the rules. You see what I'm saying? So it might seem overwhelming right now, but guess what? Practice makes good practice makes perfect. You see what I'm saying? 
You want to come to one of Absolutely, absolutely. When, when we finish here, we're going to give you some more information. All right? Read that. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the... So it's saying if the people of the land, meaning the land that you're in, they bring any wares or any fiddles. Wares talking like your house wares and that kind of stuff. Fiddles talking about food. You understand? On the Sabbath day to sell. On the Sabbath day to sell. What are we going to do? Then we will not buy it of them on the Sabbath on the Sabbath or on the holy day. So we are not supposed to buy or sell on the Sabbath or the holy day. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.